I'm going to let those guys get started, then I'm going to run back down and grab Coach. He'll be right behind him. Well, guys, given the fact that this is your, this is your last year at, at SMU, both of you, I believe, how much does it mean for you to keep pushing on and have the opportunity to eventually not only win this tournament, but maybe play in a place like Madison Square Garden? Uh, I mean, for me, personally, it, it means a lot, not only because of that, but this is just the last time I'm in college in general. You know, I'm not really worried about playing in Madison Square. I mean, it would be nice, but, I mean, every game really is my – it could be my last, you know. So, I mean, that's, that's my mentality as I approach every game. Uh, if we make it to Madison Square Garden, that's great. Uh, glory be to God. But, really, I'm just trying to play every game as hard as I can because it could be my last. 23-point turnaround between the first half and second half. What did you guys talk about at halftime? Uh, we just talked about doing what we do, you know. Um, in the first half, they got a lot of easy transition, transition buckets, and we didn't. We felt like we didn't box out as well as we should have. So, in the second half, we, you know, we came out and did what we did. We turned the defensive intensity up. We got a lot of steals, a lot of loose balls, and a lot of times they got one and done on the shot. So we, we did pretty good. You had 22 assists total. I mean, how much of a considered effort was that you guys were always looking to find the open man, even if you guys maybe had a good shot yourself? Uh, I mean, that's just been this team all season. We're very unselfish. Um, that's just another game for us. You know, I mean, they, they did a lot of helping, so it's just you got to find an open guy. That's what we did today. But, I mean, tip your hat off to them. They're a great team. They were very hard, very athletic, uh, very long. Uh, but, you know, we just we came with it. We didn't want to lose. That's what it was. What adjustments did you guys make at the half? What did Coach tell you? Right, he told us to just calm down and um, you know, take care of the little things. Uh, transition was a big thing and, and taking care of the ball and uh, boxing out. And I got a lot of offensive rebounds the first half, so that was something we, we talked about. What's going through your guys' head when Nick Moore comes out and scores 11 to start the second half? Uh, great. I mean, because, you know, he, he's our leading scorer. Uh, so, you know, when we get him going and get him hot, then we are a tough team to beat. Uh, but, you know what I mean, Nick Nick can shoot the ball. That's what he does. We all know that now. So uh, when Nick starts shooting the ball, he makes shots. I mean, you know, great job for him. Now they got to guard him, and we get open shots. Uh, so, I mean, really, you know, we want Nick to get hot every game, basically. You also obviously shoot really well. Six for eight today, four for five on threes. Did you see anything in practice leading up to this or in warm-ups today that led you to believe you might have this kind of night in you? Uh, not really. I was out here early, maybe around. 6-15, getting shots up, uh, but I was making them then, but when we didn't have one, I was missing every shot, so I had no clue really, but you know, I was feeling it, the, the, the goal was big, and uh, they were going in, and I wanted, I really wanted the ball, I, I really wanted it, so uh, when I got it, I, I looked at the rim, and I shot it. Sean, you guys have faced a, a, a lot of formidable opponents down low this season, Titus Rubles and uh, Jackson from Cincinnati, Austin Nichols and Shaq Goen from Memphis. Where, where, do, where do these guys tonight rank up with uh, all the big guys that you face this, this year? Um, they up there with the best. They, they might be the best. Um, not taking nothing away from Cincinnati and Memphis, but uh, O'Brien's a pretty he's a, he's a low. You know he can face up, he can shoot. And Mickey, he's a good young player. You know they're, they're pretty good. You both guys came out of Duncanville. Didn't end up going end up going to the same high schools together. But um, you got did you guys envision? It wasn't mean that you guys not only ended up playing college for the same team, but have an opportunity like this in your senior years? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Um, that's so far-fetched. Uh, I never, to be honest, I never thought I'd be that some you. Honest, honestly, I never thought I would be here. Uh, but I'm grateful that I'm here. Uh, I'm blessed that I'm here. Uh, I mean, really, it's it all glory to God. It's, not, it's nothing I did. It's all him. He put me in a situation to succeed, and uh, that's where we are now. And Sean? I've been knowing Nick since the fifth grade, and um, I would have never thought that we would be playing again together at SMU growing up. You know, it, it's good to go through it with him. You know, we've been knowing each other. I've been knowing his family. He's been knowing mine. And I couldn't have been through it with a better guy than Nick. You guys get the winner of Cal and Arkansas, who I guess are starting now, and then the winner then has to travel. After you've played this many games, can you put any value in just that extra little bit of time, few hours of rest that you get that your next opponent won't? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's ideal, but uh, I'm sure that that's, that's not going to really matter to them because it's not mattering to us. So, I mean, we got to play the game. The game will happen. Uh, we got to be ready. It's really, at this point in time, it is really no time to be tired. It's zero time to be tired right now. So, I'm sure they'll come out and they'll try to hit us in the mouth. They, they want to get this win and so do we. So, it should be a great game. What, what about the crowd in the second half? Uh, the crowd was amazing. It, um, 
it's probably as loud as it's been in there the second half. Um, we made a run, I think, when, when Keith hit a three, it, it exploded, and that's probably the loudest I've ever heard of here. Anything else for Nick or Sean? All right, thanks, guys. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you. A tell of two halves, Larry. What? A tell of two halves. Yeah, I mean, um, they played great the first half. They made shots. Um, I thought they got just about what they wanted. Um, but we got, <coughs> we got down 10. I think Nick hit a three, and the defense picked up a little bit. So to be down five at half and, you know, not be in real bad foul trouble other than little Nick, I thought we were pretty fortunate by the, you know, by the way they played there. You know, you can see why I was so disappointed us not getting Jordan Mickey. And then, you know, Bryant is the best post player we played against by far. And we've played against some terrific players, well coached, but second half, and the last four minutes of the first half, we defended against the quality team pretty well. Got 22 assists, 11 turnovers. That was that was pretty significant for me. Keith Frazier gave you a big lift off the bench tonight. How important was that? Oh, it was huge. But he had a, you know, he was hurt against Seattle or Irvine. He had muscle spasms, and but he had his best week of practice, and it showed. Um, and it shows how much we need him. You know, because it hasn't been easy for him. He, a lot of things haven't gone as as well as he would have liked, but I see every day him getting better. You, you and can, again, I just, uh, I realize what he's meant to our program just coming here. You know, no way we get Moutier, um, no way Yannick comes. He's just changed the way our school's perceived by young kids, especially in this community, and that's, something I was hopeful um, that we could have. And you got two kids from Duncanville that set a standard for us, you know, quality kids. And I know the crowd's loud, but I, I think they're cheering a lot of their local kids. That makes it pretty special for all of us. You, 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 see, you trailed by 10 points at one point in the first half of this game, trailed, I believe, by 8 at one point in the first half against Irvine. You said before that this team sometimes struggles when they fall behind. Is there anything that looks like maybe they've turned that corner and found out how to handle that pressure and come back? I hope so. You know, um, <coughs> you know, we got off to such a bad start against <coughs> Irvine, but the crowd, I think, really helped get us in. Um, this half, I didn't see anybody putting their heads down, or, you know, pointing fingers. So hopefully that's the case. All good teams, though. You know, you have to deal with adversity. Games don't always go the way you want. Periods in games don't go the way you want. Um, I thought the greatest thing about the Irvine game, we shoot 29% the first half and down one. You know, shoot 34 for the game and win by 14. And then this game against a quality team with shot blockers, you know, we shoot 60-something percent in the second half. I, can't bottle a game like that. You mentioned the crowd. Uh, you mentioned the crowd and how you've seen a lot of games in your your career and a lot of different crowds. How would you compare the crowd that came out in this game to probably some of the places you've seen in your in your tenure as a player and a coach? Well, I mean, this environment here is as good as any. I, I this was the loudest we've been in this building, and you know we played Memphis, Cincinnati, Louisville, Connecticut, big games here, and the crowd was awesome. But I think this was the loudest I've experienced. Um, we don't we don't beat Irvine without our crowd. We don't maybe we don't come back like tonight without our crowd. I I never imagined. You know I was hopeful that we would have a home court. You know we got a beautiful building, but I but I never imagined it to be like this. this our kids got to be thrilled to be in this environment. Got one more? Anything else? And Coach, uh, LSU shot 48% in the first half, 38% in the second half. What were those defensive adjustments that you made in the second half? I didn't. 
We didn't adjust. We, you know, we didn't want to get hurt on the board. I thought in the first half, we got hurt on second shots and we got hurt a little in transition. You know, they went zone a couple of times and when you play against the zone, it's hard to get to your man and they're a great transition team. So the second half, I, you know, I think we were a little bit better in transition. And then when you make shots, you get to set your defense. You know, so we, we made shots so then we could, we could guard in the half court a lot better. We didn't get, allow them to get out in transition. And then 11 turnovers, you know, didn't allow them to get in transition. Those, those things were key. Right. Thank, Thank you. See you Wednesday. Right. How about that? Thank you, Coach. Another day. I get to go to Brazil now. <laughs> <laughs> get the button going. Thank you.